In today's video, I have a hypothetical situation for you. Let's say you're at work and one of your colleagues has gotten wind of your upskilling process and they wanna leverage your expertise or mastery in Python for their data processing. And so you oblige, but then you learn that the data set is actually stored across 500 different data files. And so you can, before you can get started on your exploration of the data, you have to first read in all those data sets, merge them into a single data frame, and then you can begin processing. My name is Chris Pulliam. I am a PhD resident scientist, and today we're going to discuss how we can do that process efficiently and then also tell a brief data story through a single figure using principal component analysis. Let's get started. So here in the first two cells, I create the data set. The data is found in this merge data folder where I have over about 500 files that I've generated using um, the code that you see. And so here, the first thing we want to do is see how quickly we can generate a list of files that we can then loop through. So there's two ways to do this. The first is os.listdir, and we'll pass in the subdirectory, which I have stored as a variable called subdirectory. And here you can see we have our list of files. Now, the reason I don't like to use this method as often is because I'm still missing part of the path if I want to pass this directly to pandas. Of course, I can do a join on this with the, the folder uh, subdirectory. However, my preferred method is to use, uh, use os.scander. Um, this will, again, give me the path and the file name, and I will create a list of data frames using a list comprehension. So this is a common error you'll see if you're doing a lot of um, file manipulation where we get this as a directory error. And what we have is um, a checkpoint for a notebook that has been stored in this folder. Whether it's a checkpoint or some other file that you don't want to include, one thing I often do is use the um, if file.name. So as I mentioned before, we have two attributes. We have name and we have path. So this will return a string of the file name that ends with, and we can just pass our CSV. So if the file ends with CSV, then it will read and we get our list of data frames. And so this is a very common workaround. And so now we have our list of data frames. The next step will be to concatenate them together. So let's pass in pd.concat. We will just do our data frames and we want to concatenate along axis one. And so that quickly, we already have our larger data table with 500 columns representing each of our data files and 10 rows, um, each representing each observation of the sample. So the next thing I would typically do, um, I mean, we can do some data exploration, we can describe, we can do uh, look at the info, look at the size of memory. However, let's just go to plotting this data in a way that, that is sensible. And so my preferred method when we have lots of variables is to uh, use principal component analysis and a scatter plot to, to visualize all of what we've got. So let's do that. Okay, so what I'll do is create an instance of both my standard scalar um, using uh, this and my principal component analysis. And I will just use two, uh, generate two principal components. And then we can just chain these methods together. So first we'll, we'll scale um, our data set. Then we will pass that scale data to our PCA. We'll save this as scores. And as I mentioned before, I often like to just generate this into a, a data frame. So let's just call this scores data frame equals PD dot data frame. We'll pass in our scores array. Columns will equal PC1, PC2. The index in this case doesn't really matter very much in this, in this example, but we could pass that in. Um, so now we've got the scores df.head. So you can see what our, our small data frame looks like. And we will then also then just create a scatter plot. Now you can see we've got our 
um, some clustering in this data. And so this is not immediately obvious when you look at the full data set, but apparently there are, there is a pattern here. If you want to understand that pattern more, I again, go back to the top and look at how we generate this data. And so this is why being able to quickly read in multiple data files is key. And then using some sort of dimension reduction when necessary to help see if there's some underlying patterns. In this case, we would say that there's probably five groups and we can start trying to understand uh, what value there is in these groups, if any. Um, and this again, highlights the importance of being able to use Python to open multiple files, process the data quickly, and then begin to tell a story that can help generate new hypotheses. If you found this video helpful, subscribe, like, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.